Thank you very much for joining us. In our very first story today, over 5,000 trainee nurses and midwives yet to be posted after their studies are to pick it at the Flagstaff House today. The agitating nurses and midwives say several attempts to get governments to address their concerns have failed. And like I said, we'll be taking you live to the grounds as soon as we're able to establish contact with our correspondent on the ground there and also speak to leaders of this particular action. But away from that, we can do some other stories. And the chairman of the governing National Democratic Congress in the Ahafano North constituency of the Ashanti region, Samuel Lawuni, is fighting for his life in hospital after stab wounds to his face and face. Reports indicate he was stabbed twice in the head and beneath his eye by his constituency treasurer, Adams Al Hassan. Let's get more on this from the constituency vice chairman. Mm. Well, let's get more on this from constituency vice chairman Abdul Karim, who will be joining us pretty shortly. But that particular story has to do with the regional chairman of the uh, NDC in the Ashanti region. We are told he has received multiple uh, stab wounds there. He's actually in hospital fighting for his life. Let's get. Okay, well, I'm told the line has dropped once more, and uh, we'll, we'll try and bring that back as well. But now, former President Jerry John Rawlings has asked delegates of the ruling NDC to choose selfless leaders at the party's primary schedule for next month. He made a call during the campaign launch of his daughter's bid to become the next member of parliament for the Clote Kole constituency. The former president, who made a surprise appearance at the event, described his daughter, Zanetto Rollins, as a selfless person who will serve the people of Ghana well. When I say vote for her, it is not because of her name, Zenato Rollins, but because you are voting for truthfulness. Brothers and sisters, show our party executives that you are tired of the stealing, falsehood, and evil doing. We want good and kind people. <laughs> If we don't change our way of doing things, we will suffer. From Kufu, time in the office. But what the meals day? Can you hear me? When the Nationi, the fact of my Abba, that they will tackle. They are be. In the Nidi, come and in ya no. We before. We back by washing. There were other attempts to rescue the integrity of the party. Fail by fail. Right into the last election, sir. Now, Jativi can be. Now, I vote for the wrong people. I keep saying this all the time, and I have been made to look like I'm always being unnecessarily critical of government. But it is because I have seen certain things within our party that are bad, even including bribing people with TVs and things to vote for the wrong people. <laughs> Now see how we are suffering. We want truthful and good people, not those who treat us scornfully after we vote for them. Well, that was former President Rollins there. But uh, Dr. Zanato Ajima Rollins on her part says she has put together a development plan to help reshape the Clote Kole constituency once she's voted into power. <laughs> We're not going to stand there and make promises we know we can't keep. And whatever promises we make are based on the reality of what is possible. We are having discussions at every meeting and interactions.
interacting with the people in the various wards to have a better understanding of the problems that are faced by the people there so that when we're creating a development plan it is tailored to the needs of the people it's not just a general blueprint that we just use there is a blueprint but it has to be tailored according to the individual needs of the various communities that make up the Clotty Collie constituency so we are not in the business of sharing money for votes no we in the, are we in the business of making promises we cannot keep we are we are committing ourselves to work together with the members of the constituency to make something positive happen we're investing in people we're looking into sanitation and we're looking at employment and skills development we're looking at enhancement of the health of the people and to earlier story of what uh, happening now over 5,000 nurses and midwives yet to be posted after their studies are to pick it at the Flagstaff House today. Like I said, the agitating nurses and midwives say several attempts to get governments to address their concerns have failed. Matilda Fomega is currently at the Flagstaff House and joins me now over the telephone lines with more on this. Matilda, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Can you, Thanks, can you tell me the situation now at the Flagstaff House? What is going on yes. there? Yes, uh, just at the Flagstaff House, not inside, but uh, mm. at the bus stop uh, to Apikiko. Uh, you have a uh, number of nurses there. The number this morning is about 100 uh, from across the country. I spoke with some of them who are coming from Volta region, some from Western and then Central region. Uh, their main concern is that uh, two years since uh, they left school and they are bonded by uh, they've not been posted yet. Uh, so this is their frustration. And they tell me that several attempts to get the Ministry of Health uh, to respond to their concerns haven't worked over the years. So for them this morning, they are here at the Flagstaff House to speak with the president and send him to, to know that uh, these nurses have not even written formally to the Flagstaff House. Uh, they don't have any form of invitation. The police is not aware of uh, their meeting here today. So uh, just uh, while they're around 9 o'clock when they started arriving, uh, we saw more police reinforcement coming over to this place. And uh, they've been asked to cross to the other side of the road because, of course, uh, the, the, the Flagstaff House is the security zone. So as we speak now, uh, the nurses are, are now standing somewhere close to the Flagstaff House, but okay. not at the basket way. Okay. okay, but do we know whether or not anyone has attended to them, any official of the, no, of the presidency? No, no, uh, From okay. what it appears, it, it, it seems like no official is aware of their meeting here today. Okay. I've been speaking with them. Who knows they are coming here? Who has invited them over? It appears no one knows about uh, their, their meeting here today. So uh, there's no official here addressed to them. As it's, it's only the, the greater Afrika now police commander that okay. I've seen around that this year, you will know, he is trying to convince these uh, nurses to return to their homes and then use the proper channels to uh, get their message across to the leaders. Okay, many thanks for that update, Matoda Omega. But uh, let's now cross over and speak to Clement Apori, who's the spokesperson for the Coalition of Unemployed Nurses and Midwives. He joins us over the telephone lines now. So, uh, Mr. Poirier, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Why the need for such an action? Well, it, it happens to be a need when our leaders or those in authority feel that they give us several promises and they do not fulfill their promises. For about 10 months now, staying home unemployed, whilst others have been granted, those whom we call, we know as our colleagues, have been employed, whilst we, about 6,000 qualified, government-bonded nurses, are still at home, unemployed. So, exactly what do you seek to achieve with this action of yours? Please come again. Exactly what do you seek to achieve with this action of yours? By picketing at the Flagstaff House, what are you seeking to achieve? Yeah, uh, we, we assume... We assume that probably our issue hasn't gotten to the president himself to know about what is going on. Because we've, we've tried all the channels. We've been to the Ministry of Health several times and that nothing has been done. So probably we have to take our issue to the head of the state. Where probably we, we, we're hoping for a good result. So you're working with assumptions now. And now the situation is such that obviously the president has delegated someone to speak to you. That, obviously the person in the capacity of, uh, I'm speaking of the health minister. Are you telling me you haven't had any correspondence with the health minister or anyone from the ministry since this issue came up? Well, 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 for, for now, I for one uh, currently have been at a different place, so I don't know. My, one of my people is there, I'm yet to confirm about that. 
Mm. Tell me about the promises you claim government uh, gave to you early on and uh, what happened to them? Well, nothing. Nothing has come out of them. What were you so, told? What were you told? Well, we, from the onset, on the first, uh, the first picketing, we, we did it on the 17th and then the 18th. And we were promised two weeks for employment, everything to be sold for us. Yet, we gave them more than two weeks and nothing came out. So we went there again, and then we were promised by the minister himself that by the end of September, everything will be done for us to get on board. And yet still, nothing has happened. And today, as we speak, 19th of October, and we are still in the house. So you are still at home. Uh, I, I, yeah. Is it that all of you are home, or some of your colleagues have already been posted? Well, those who have been posted are about 1,004, where we currently have... Six, about 6,000 still at home. Okay, and so... Those so, who so, have posted mm. also happen to be those who purchase a particular form, Ghana Health Service, and that is what we have now. Okay, even so... That, uh, even that, not all of them have been given their posting. But that should give you some confidence that government is indeed working to get, you, get your issue resolved. Should that not be enough reason for you to just give them some more time? Why then do you have to go all the way to the flag servers to pick it? Uh, we, we, we are not considering that to be something of a good, a good sign because the promises have been given several times and none of them have been fulfilled. But you just mentioned that some fine. of your colleagues have already been placed. Yeah, that is, uh, since August. That has been in August. That has been in August. Mm -hmm. And we've been there. After that, we've been there and the promises have been given several times and there's nothing out of them. I see. All right. Mr. Pori, thank you very much for your time on News Desk here uh, on Joy News. We've been speaking to Clement Pori, spokesperson for the aggrieved nurses. And he's been telling us that, well, they have been speaking to government, but essentially all the things government has said to them, all the promises uh, given to them have all failed. The government has failed to stick to those promises and that they're going to stay there a while longer. So we'll see how this pans out. I'll bring you much more on this subsequently, including a response from the ministry as and when we do have it. We have been trying to get on the phone lines the public relations officer of the Ministry of Health, Tony Goodman, but unfortunately he's not picking our calls. We will try and bring him to you as and when we do have him. Time now for us to take a break on news. When we come back, we'll bring you some more stories. Don't go away.